Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to describe the Hessian matrix as a bilinear form. Okay, or rather, I'm going to explain how the Hessian matrix, which is used to compute second order directional derivatives, how that computation is like evaluating a bilinear form. So first, some preliminaries. So from linear algebra. So if you have a n cross n matrix, so it's a square matrix, n rows, n columns, and uh, we'll call that matrix B, and let's say the entries are real numbers, okay? Then B defines what's called a bilinear form. Well, how does it define that? For any two vectors, n dimensional vectors, I can send that pair of vectors, the ordered pair of vectors, to this product. So u and v I'm treating as column vectors. So column vectors. So rather I'm thinking of them as column vectors. So I'm multiplying u transpose, which is a row vector, 1 cross n, okay, by b, which is a n cross n square matrix, by v, which is a n cross 1 column vector. When I multiply all three, I get a 1 cross 1 uh, uh, matrix, and that's just a number, okay? So what bilinear form actually is, is it's, it's a map which takes in two vectors and gives a number, okay? And it satisfies some conditions, satisfies what's called bilinearity. Okay, I won't go into those conditions, but any matrix B like this defines a bilinear form. Okay? Mm -hmm. And conversely, any bilinear form you can think of on Rn comes from a matrix, and more of that matrix is unique. So, so there's a correspondence between n cross n matrices over the reals, mm -hmm. and R bilinear forms, that's just saying bilinear forms on n dimensional space. Okay. Okay, so, so you can sort of go back and forth between a bilinear form and a matrix. Now, there is some subtlety because there's some equivalences between bilinear forms. So there are some equivalence relations on bilinear forms which say they essentially describe similar things. But if you ignore that, this is just like on the nose. This is true. Okay. So now where does this fit in with the Hessian matrix? Well, the Hessian matrix is actually a matrix valued function. Okay. It's not a matrix of numbers. It's a matrix of functions, right? But at a point, it's a matrix of numbers, if if it exists at the point, right? So at a point A, so let's have, so you have this function, are we up here? Yes. Okay, so you have a function of uh, n variables, x1 to xn. Okay, and I'm saying let's fix a point A in the domain. So that's just A1, A2 to An, right? It's a point in the domain. And suppose the second derivative, that is the Hessian matrix, exists at the point. Okay? Then that defines a bilinear form. Okay, what's that bilinear form? Defined by HF of A. Hmm? Yeah? Uh, it's B transpose. Well, U transpose. B transpose. Hmm? Times HF, HF of A times V. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, from what we've done up here, what's this? This is the second order directional derivative. Okay, so it's just this at the point A, right? So this is dv du f at A. So this bilinear form, which is defined by the Hessian matrix at a point, is just a form which takes as input two vectors and outputs the second order directional derivative with respect to those two vectors. Okay? Okay. Now, there's something more we can say about this, which is that usually it's going to be symmetric. Why will the Hessian matrix usually be a symmetric matrix? The Clairaut's law. So, by Clairaut's theorem, so, so it's usually, or under, for nice functions, this is symmetric. For nice functions, so when when the when it's continuous, for instance, when the when the second order partials are all continuous, then it's symmetric.
and the symmetric of the, the symmetric nature of the matrix also tells you that the bilinear form it defines is symmetric. What do I mean by symmetric for a bilinear form? Well, it means what you think it should mean. It means that the bilinear form on U and V is the same as the bilinear form on V and U. Okay? So if you have a symmetric matrix here for a bilinear form, the form is also symmetric. That means that the form on U and V is the same as the form on V and U. Okay? okay. Why is that? Let me just do that on a separate sheet. So, okay, let's say that B is symmetric, okay? Then, what is the transpose of this? Well, first of all, it should be the same as... B transpose B. Well, first of all, it should be the same as what you started with, right? Because it's just a scalar 1 cross 1 matrix, the product. Okay, so it's the same as this. Okay, now we can simplify it another way. So the product transpose is the product of the transposes in the reverse order, right? Mm -hmm. So it's V transpose, B transpose, U double transpose, which is just U. But now what do we know? If B is symmetric, what is B transpose? B. Awesome. So we get V transpose B U. Okay? which is the same as U transpose VV, which means that the output is the same whether we feed in U and V or V and U. Okay? Okay? Yeah. So, so this is symmetric as a form, which means that in this case, so in this case, let me just use the red one. So in the nice functions case, so when, when the Hessian is con varies continuously, What can we conclude? We can conclude that the directional derivatives are actually symmetric in the inputs, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, if you assume that the mixed partials and the pure partials are continuous, you can deduce from that that actually the sort of Clairaut's theorem generalizes to arbitrary directions, not just to the input directions. Okay, so why is this important? How will this help us? Well, the key idea is that this is what helps you prove or deduce the second derivative test for a function of multiple variables. Okay, and we'll see that in a future video. Do you have any questions? No. Not right now? Okay, great.